Welcome back to Fishing with Vance. Um, it's 2021 and it's icy cold outside today here in Western PA. So, no fishing for me. So, as promised, I'm going to start getting into some product reviews. So, today, the first one I'm going to do is going to be an ultralight comparison. So, I'm going to be comparing various ultralights that uh, I've picked up over the years. Some of them are hand-me-downs, but um, I'm going to compare these other ultralights to what has now become my favorite one, which is the HMX, uh, Fenwick HMX ultralight. So I'm going to talk about each one, what I like about them, what I don't like about them, and, uh, you know, the reels that are pa paired up on these guys, and we'll go from there. But, you know, for the most part, it's going to be a product review of that HMX. I'm not sure if most of you guys use ultralights or not. Um, I do primarily for, let's start with that. Um, the primary use for me is <clears throat> for trout fishing. Um, that's where I first started getting an ultralight uh, was for trout fishing in the stream. And um, it's... I don't know. I enjoy it. Uh, trout fight like crazy, and uh, you can put a little lighter line on these, and they work really well for for trout fishing. Now, obviously, they work great for pan fishing as well, and um, I don't do that a lot where I go out and target pan fish. Um, I'd like to, and maybe this year we'll get after that because I'm going to be fishing some new spots this year. So the ultralight is just a lot of fun uh, to catch them on. Sometimes. I'll even use these guys if, uh, you know, if I get in a stretch there sometimes out at, uh, out at my lake where I'm catching a lot of small bass. Um, I'll just go with ultralights and throw them, and then, you know, it makes it extra fun to, you know, hook into these smaller bass and reel them in on these ultralight uh, rods. So, having said that, let's get started with the review and comparison. So, first up is going to be a really old rod. It was handed down to me by my pops, my hero, my dad. He left me this rod, and it is an old, this is an old uh, Daiwa. I got it upside down for you there, but yeah, it's, it's a Daiwa rod. And I think this thing is, I want to say that it is a six-foot rod, same as the other one. Uh, not quite. I think it's a five and a half. So doing this with one hand so bear with me um but this old guy it 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 is the flimsiest thing ever um i don't know how my dad ever caught anything with this but i kept it because you know if you really want to get some really light stuff there it's, it's telling you that it only does two to four pound line um really light one on one eighth to one fourth ounce um, uh, lures, but it is, it has so little backbone in it, so much action, but the, this thing is a blast to catch trout with. Um, and, uh, he has it paired up on an old and uh, an old, uh, RGX 70 RG 75 X also from Daiwa. And uh, it's a thousand series, um, uh, one thousand series reel. Has the old long cast, quick, the long cast, quick finger fire uh, reel. And uh, wish he was still here with me, fishing this thing. But anyway, I threw it into the mix just because I have it. I don't normally fish with it. I don't want anything to happen to it. Um, so I don't even think I've changed the line on it. Uh, I think I might have taken it out once, but uh, I don't want anything to happen to this thing. So, but from a from a perspective of from a Daiwa, from an ultralight perspective, this thing is super light, and uh, you hook a fish onto this. Maybe if you got a couple pound fish on this, it would be a battle royal. All right, so on to more serious, more serious ultralights. Okay, so the other three and two of them are the same, but I have different reels on them. So. Let's talk about the first one, and it's the same, identical to this other one. And these are St. Croix rods. And honestly, I can't say anything bad about them in the sense that 
they are well made and they're not cheap and uh, this saint croix is a uh, it's a five foot ultralight with moderate action and <clears throat> it, it'll hold two to six pound line here i have a a, a little uh fluke on there that i was trying out with uh for bass and this is this is these are single piece rods and that's one thing that I would give it the advantage over the other ultralights and it uh, it's a single piece so it's a little stronger has a little bit more backbone to it. it the the edge that i would give it over the other over the uh the egg gmx that i'm going to get to is it's just better made down here the the raw uh, the real connections are better made and it's it's super nice i mean this thing is bulletproof it's going nowhere I have it, this one I have an old uh, Sienna 1000 series uh, reel on this and uh, from Shimano. And it, it does okay. This is more of a backup rod for me. Um, I'll take this on opening day of trout in case I completely snafu the other one. And then that way, you know, I can go back to the truck, grab this and, and keep on fishing. Because, you know, I've been known to completely jack up reels five minutes into every trip. But anyway... So this, this rod though, like I said, it's five feet. It does have good sensitivity and it, it uh, does the job, especially for trout. I don't like this as much for smallmouth, And I'll talk about that when I get to, uh, to the HMX, but, uh, probably because it's shorter, not probably definitely, um, from a casting perspective, you can't throw this very far. So you got to Get out there pretty far which is why it works for me for trout based on where i fish as opposed to something i can throw a little further when i'm when i am smallmouth fishing so but uh everything else on this is top notch the the eyes have stayed you know totally intact i do take good care of them but everything has stayed very well intact with this and um actually like i said i have two of them so this one is the second one that is, I believe it's identical. Um, it is the, it's, it's not identical, but it's also, it's made by, drawing a blank, by St. Croix, sorry. It's made by St. Croix, and this is the Triumph. This has moderate action, whereas this one has, yeah, they both have moderate action. I'm sorry. Same thing. It's a five-foot rod. This is the one that I generally bring. As a backup because i have it paired up with my favorite the uh the fluger president and this is the i believe it's the 20 series uh they used to call it the 6920 i don't know if they call it that anymore it's basically the 20 series and i love these little reels they just kick butt as i've talked about before so this has a uh the shimano i'm sorry the uh, fluger 6920 on it paired with this little ultralight and it's it is a it is a really good combination really nice here i'll put it out this way because you can see it better than whatever it is a great combination super light a blast to catch panfish with a blast to catch trout with um i love it again it's it's tending to become a almost a backup situation because you know the number one here that i'm going to talk about is uh is taken over uh for my is uh, moved up the depth chart, I should say, for the my ultralights. Um, but anyway, all right, so can't say anything. Again, very well made. Um, nothing negative about a St. Quarry rod in that sense. They're just very well made. Expensive. Uh, I think I got this one for Christmas. Somebody got it for me for Christmas, and then I uh, ended up getting a second one, and this was all before for a backup, and this was all before the... Uh, my new favorite came along so having said that let's move on to this ultralight now this guy this is my favorite and i'll tell you why it is the shima or i'm sorry the fenwick hmx which my son the catter he uses a lot of the fenwick hmx he has ultralight he has um, the medium rods, um, uh, medium light for bass, things like that. But he first got this combination and I loved it. So I had to duplicate it. Um, this HMX, what I like about it is it also is very well made, 
good connection has the cork all the way at the bottom which i like some people don't like that and i also have a fluger president on here the 6920 on this guy i had to because i love this 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 rod so much now what do i like about it the most important thing that i like about it is it's longer it's six foot long and what that allows me to do is let me just double check you know what i'm wrong it's five and a half feet long it's not six foot strike that what I, let me start over okay so what i like about this is it's longer it's five foot six inches long so you wouldn't think that five that six inches makes a difference but it does um so if you put them side by side it is longer so what that makes a difference is is in how far i can cast it and when i'm smallmouth fishing i can't wade out as far as when i'm trout fishing so this extra length on this on this ultralight is is critical to be able to cast all the way across the the river when i'm smallmouth fishing and that's why i love this thing so much plus it is very well made also eyelets are are very nice uh, no issues with those and i i just love this thing it is this this is a ultralight moderate fast with a one to six pound line like i said five foot six inches and it just feels perfect in, in my hand it's just it's perfectly balanced uh, i fish with this for bass uh sometimes and you may have seen some of my i'll put some pictures in this review to show me using this uh out on the out on the bass pelican bass raider this year but now are there any negatives to this guy i'd say the number one negative is it's a two-piece rod i don't like two-piece rods but you know it is what it is and uh, that would be the one negative i just like a one-piece rod because they they uh seem to perform better than two-piece so that'd be the one negative on it and again if you're comparing it to the if you compare it to the st croix i'd have to give the edge to st croix in terms of which one is made better it's not big it's not a huge difference and some people might disagree with that but i think the connections here um, these are steel these are plastic um, i have no issue with this but again if you're going to compare it i'd have to give the edge here to the st croix rod now the st croix rod also costs less i can't remember what i what i paid for these and uh, i'll put it up i'll put the prices this is my favorite thing to do try to point put the prices here here somewhere put prices of what i paid anywho so i know that a lot i paid less for this for this fenwick hmx than those st croix rods so anyway overall i'm gonna say this is my favorite ultralight setup it's the fluger president 6920 with the hm the the uh, fenwick hmx and uh it's five foot six six inches i have six pound line on here six pound mono because that's what i like to throw i don't get i don't throw lower than six pound anymore i used to when i was younger but i got tired of re-rigging re all the time if it cost me a handful of fish because they can see the line so be it but where i fish in the river has a lot of snags so you have a better chance of getting it back if you use the six pound mono than the four um so all right that's all i'm going to say on this i'd say overall i would rate the fenwick eagle i would or i'm sorry the fenwick hmx i would give this a, a 95 out of 100 uh just because there's i take five percent off the plastic connection but other than that this thing is perfect i love it absolutely love it uh the st croix rod i would probably give this a 90 just because it's only five feet long but hey i bought it that way it's on me but it's not that and uh it's not that this is a poorly made rod by any stretch i just prefer a little bit more length so i'd give that a 90 so if you're looking for ultralights a lot of people make them 
I don't think you can go wrong with, definitely can't go wrong with St. Croix, but I don't think you can go wrong. I would recommend the Fenwick HMX if you're in the market for an ultra light for either trout or, you know, pan fish or whatever. So hope you enjoyed this video, guys. It's just a quick breakdown of the ultra lights that I use and um, what I do and don't like about them. Stay tuned because I will be doing more of these. Uh, I'm going to get into almost all the equipment over there. My garage is a disaster right now, so that's okay. But anyway, back to this. So I'll get into that stuff. We're gonna, I'm going to start getting into a little bit more into the tackle and lures and things. Um, guys ask a lot of questions during the year about how you're rigging things, how you're doing things. And when you're out in the boat, I try to show it, but... I uh, probably don't do a very good job of it, but here in here in Vance's garage, we can take our time, and I'll show you just how I'm doing things. It doesn't mean it's the absolute be-all, end-all by any stretch of imagination. A lot of this stuff I've learned from other guys, and you know, I'm just passing it on because it's worked for me, and some things haven't worked for me. But again, thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of fishing with Vance. I really appreciate it. I love the comments. Get to talk to people, meet people online, and. And it's just awesome. So if you would take the time to comment, I appreciate that as much as a subscription, if not more. But if you want to subscribe, that's great. Hit the bell, all that stuff. But leave me a comment and let me know what you think or what you what ultralights you use. That's what I'd like to hear. So I'll talk to you soon. See you next time. Thanks for joining today on fishingwithvance.com.